So today we're going to talk about soil. So soil has many, many components. So this is the base soil right here. You see that? What color is that? Brown. Brown, right? Nice dark brown. What What does it feel like? It feels like mud. Muddy? What's called clay. Kind of like Play-Doh? Yep, kind of like Play-Doh. What do you notice about this spot right here? Um, there's a rock. I'll feel it. Is it soft? Oh, is it soft? It's crumbly. Or what color is it? White. white. It's white, huh? Or maybe um, teal. Does it kind of look like a spider web? Yeah. Like a spider, like a spider web. web, huh? That's called mycelia. Yes. My my mycelia. Mycelia. Uh huh. That's just a fancy word for fungus. It's the it's the web of fungus that connects all living things in the soil. It's kind of like the internet for the soil. So whenever a plant needs something from the soil, this communicates with plants between each other. Okay. So this is kind of like the mushroom of the soil. Ooh. What do you notice here? How does this compare to this, this dark soil? This is kind of like mud or clay, right? Yeah. And then what about this here? What, what does the texture feel like? The soil feels like very moody, breaky. Yeah. Mm. And like straws? Str like super, straws? It's super, kind of, super moody. And what does this look like? What does this look like it came from? Um, it came from a tree. A tree? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is more like a, like what, grass? Yeah. If we were to just have our soil just plain, and we had a hot summer day, and there was water in the soil, and it wasn't covered, what do you think would happen? Would it get? Colder or hotter if the sun was directly on it? Hot. Hot? What do you think would happen to the water? But do you think if it's hot, do you think water would have a tendency to go away or stay in the soil? What happens to you when you're in the sun for too long? Does your water stay in your body or does it leave your body? Mm, sometimes if you ever have something, mm -hmm. and you never put something, you get tan. You get tan, right? So yeah. you get hot and you're, you're, you get a little sweaty? Yep. Think tomato of a... Uh, tomato is a vegetable. What's that? Tomato is a fruit. Tomato is a fruit. It's technically a berry. What? You're very good. Very intelligent. So, if we didn't have our soil covered with this stuff, it might lose a little bit of water. So you might want to think about this as a hat. This is called mulch. Okay. Alright? So soil has different components. Soil has its base texture, which is usually clay, or sand or loam, and they all have different drainage and, and moisture and nutrient retention properties. But the most important thing is that we give it shelter from the sun, and so we have mulch. So think of mulch as like your clothing or your hat. So if the sun were to shine on this, the water would go away right away, but if we cover it right back up, then that sun's gonna, gonna have a little bit of a harder time taking the moisture out of the soil. What do we have here? Dirt. Dirt. But who made the dirt? Well, you help me too, but who's in this that we like? Worms and bugs. Worms and bugs? Yeah. Um, so, sometimes spiders. Sometimes spiders, huh? And rolling stones, worms, nothing. So what do you think the worms and bugs do in here? So do you think that the worms are just in there for fun? Or what do you think they're doing to the soil? They're, um, they're kind of like they're eating the plants they're eating the plants yeah yeah so they're like digesting the plants like you digest plants so the worms are digesting the food and they're turning it into what uh, oil? yeah they're turning it well technically this is a uh, compost oh. so worms are decomposing okay. thank you thank you Jimmy for modeling what Lucas needs to be doing we're almost done so we talked about our soil, and we talked about our mulch, and we talked about our compost, our vermicompost that the worms are making. Do you think that it would be better to put the worms on top of the mulch or underneath the mulch? Underneath the mulch. Very good. Why do you think it would be better to put them underneath the mulch? Because we don't want to see worms and bugs mm -hmm. at, at, at the dirt. Nope. We want to we want to see them safe and secure, right? Yeah, safe and secure. 
And don't let the birds eat them. Exactly. <gasps> so we want to protect our worms, right? Yeah, I don't eat them. So just like we protect our soil with our mulch hat, we protect our worms with our mulch hat. So our compost goes in something called the lasagna layer. You know what lasagna is, right? Yeah. Does lasagna come in multiple pieces or, or one piece? Um, multiple. Multiple, right? There's like the bottom layer, and then you have the sauce, and then you have the other layer, and then you have more sauce, right? So we build our soil in different layers just like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a handful of compost, and we're just gonna sprinkle it on the bed, just like this. Little circle. So we're gonna each do that five times. Oh, there's a worm. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna put the worms in there too. So just gently, we're gonna want to spread it evenly all around the bed, oh. just like this. All around the bed. We're gonna work all our compost and all our worm friends into the bed. And then we're gonna put our mulch hat on top of the bed. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna put you're gonna put your friends in the bed. You're gonna tuck them in. I can't even my shovel. There you go. Go ahead and grab a bigger shovel. Grab it. Where I killed Grab a scoop. It's okay. There you go. Make sure you get in the bed and spread it out a little bit more, though. We went all around. There you go. We're making lasagna of compost, mulch. We're not done, Lucas. A little bit more. I dump it. We're not done baking our lasagna. See how we're covering this? Yeah. What a nice even coverage. I see worms. You see worms? That's a good sign, huh? Oh, I see a worm fully on my foot on the bed. We gotta add our decomposers oh, to the bed. What? Do you think this will help our veggies go strong? Good job, Cammy. And what are we doing now? Breaking the bed! Yep. We're making our bed, right? By spreading the woody mulch, what do you think we're giving the worms? Um, blanket. A blanket? Yeah. Yep. We're going to keep them nice and cool so they can stay in place yes, and you love me. do you think do you think if we're giving the bl a blanket to stay cozy do you think they'll run away or they're gonna stay here stay here do you think that's what we want yeah. of course right like what i can do big chunks actually it feels like we want a big blanket on our worms actually it feels like um 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 uh an onion Feels like an onion? Yeah, feels like wow, an onion. Wow, look at you. Whoa, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. You're a warm hero. What are you standing on, Lucas? Um, what? Uh, cardboard? Cardboard. Come on. So cardboard is actually a natural substance. If we water it and water it and water it, do you think it'll stay like that or do you think it'll break down? It will break down. It'll break down, right? Mm. What else do you think the cardboard is doing to the soil? What is it blocking? The sky! It's blocking the sky, right? Yeah. yeah. So the sun's not going to be able to get to the soil underneath. So anything underneath there is not going to get the sun that it needs to survive. Do you think that the water underneath the cardboard is going to stay or it's going to leave if it has this cardboard? Um, um, if it stays, it will is even though we're killing the grass, we're gonna improve the structure of the soil over time because yeah, it's gonna block the sun, but it's also gonna retain moisture and it's gonna allow the mycelia to create new connections in the soil. And those new connections are gonna help us grow more plants. We don't wanna just leave the cardboard like this because it might actually get the sun and actually dry out. So what do you think the cardboard needs? Just like our soil needs, what do you think our cardboard needs? You guess? What? Yeah, it needs water, because otherwise it'll just dry out and shrivel up. We also need one more thing to keep the water on the cardboard. Seaweed. That's close, because seaweed has a lot of uh, minerals and carbon in it. What's that behind you? What did we add to the, the bed? Straw. Which is grass, right? 
So the grass and the straw is like a blanket. It's our mulch. Remember what we did with our layers over there? What were we baking with our layers? Mm, cake. A cake or a lasagna, right? Mm. So we need to add layers on top of the cardboard for it to stay in place. Now we're blocking the sun, we want to keep it cool, right? Good job on watering the mulch too. Looks like it's a little dry on the far end. And we're extending our bed with the sheet mulch. Even though we're getting rid of the, the grass and the weeds, we want to keep the soil moist. Because water is the source of life. But always pay attention to the edges. Because the edges are the first thing to dry out. Remember, we're adding layers to our cake. That's the thing. We want to cover the whole thing. We want to cover the whole thing. Nice thick layer, right, Lucas? Want to spread it out a little bit? Good job. You're going to build the web of life with this underneath that cardboard. Mycelia is going to be so happy, and the worms are going to be happy, and the roots of the plants that are going to go here in the fall are going to be happy. We'll be able to plant broccoli and cauliflower. Careful with that. We want to keep that below the knees. We don't want it anywhere near anyone's face. Good job, Farmer Lucas. There you go. Nice thick layer. Here's a garden update a few weeks later. We have our raised bed, sprouting some three sisters, companion plants, and our cover crop field, along with some cut flower varieties of zinnias and daisies. Here's Penstemon, California native. Ceanothus, another native. White sage, establishing very well. Mexican blue sage, love the electric blue flowers on this one. Wooly blue curls, which smells like sweet bubblegum. Another view of those cut flowers. Just love the tricolor painted varieties. Another view of the three sisters bed coming in along with some marigolds. Hummingbird sage, which is another California native, one of my favorites, smells like uh, juicy fruit. Scissorinchium bellum, or blue-eyed grass, another one of my favorites. Apricot mallow. Here's our adopted blueberry plant. Thank you to JD and Gabriella for gifting us this delicious berry for our family to enjoy. It's very abundant. And a look at our blackberry that will be ripe pretty soon. Can't wait for these.